If you're one of those people that has mice in your house and you want to rid your house of vermin, this video contains footage that is going to show you how to do it, and it is absolutely worth your time. So stay tuned in the video, watch that, and learn how to create patterns around obstructions to keep the vermin out to begin with. This is a really good video, and it's really short. I hope it helps you out. Welcome to Warrington, Pennsylvania. This township here was founded in October of 1734, and it's actually named after Warrington in Cheshire, England. Now you may have heard of Josh Adams, he's a running back for the New York Jets, and he's also played for the Philadelphia Eagles. Well, oddly enough, he was born right here in Warrington, back in 1996, and he was also born in October. This video is going to teach you a very simple trick on making patterns around extremely difficult obstructions. In this video here, our client had mice coming into her home through the hole that they created for her air conditioning lines. As you can see in the video, this isn't just a simple round hole. And to complicate things further, it's going through her vinyl siding. So you have angles upon angles. And I'm going to show you how to close it in using a nice piece of sheet copper and it's going to fit just like a glove. It's extremely important to find a straight edge, a flat and straight area that's consistent. I'm using the underside of the vinyl siding above where I'm working. Your straight edge could be a wall, a pattern in your linoleum, a grout line, even a line you drew on the floor yourself. It doesn't matter where the straight edge comes from as long as it's stationary You're going to use painter's tape for this procedure for a couple of reasons. First, it's self-adhesive. And it's not so sticky that you have to tear it off like you saw me doing with the duct tape in the beginning of the video. Secondly, it's easy to tear, easy to fold, and even rip. Now, I myself like the wider tape, but you can use whatever width you like, or even a combination of several different widths. You do you, okay? I always start by putting a piece of tape along the straight edge. You'll see why in a bit. After you get the straight piece stuck in position, start applying tape around the obstruction using as many pieces of tape as you want. Just make sure that each additional piece of tape that you apply overlaps onto an already stuck piece of tape. Make sure that when you put each piece on, it fits into the odd shape of the obstruction perfectly. And when you're done, and you start to pull it off, start with the first piece you put down. This way, that piece will kind of pull the rest of the pieces with it. Just make sure you keep it all together. Don't let anything pull apart from each other. Now the important thing is when you put the tape onto the piece you're going to be cutting out, make sure you line up the straight edge piece of the tape with the straight edge piece of whatever you're going to be cutting out. In this case, the sheet copper. Now you can just see I'm using my speed square here to make two 90 degree lines. This way, when I cut this out, everything looks nice and square, and I'll be able to cut it out to match that exact hole that's in the siding. You see the shape of the hole there is kind of like a rectangle with a weird shape I'm tracing around here. That's not just a regular hole. That would be very difficult to map out without using this tape method. And you'll see when we get done just how well this fits.
Well, would you look at that. This patch fits like it was laser cut, and it's all because of a few pieces of painter's tape. Now, cutting around objects, mapping out angles, and often even some simple math is what causes anxiety in DIYers, because they don't know the simple tips and tricks that we professionals use when it comes to solving these issues. Now, this might come across as a stupid video to some people, but there are tons of people out there that don't know this trick, and now that you've seen it, I hope it helps you out with your own project. Now let's keep going forward so you can see how I attach this to the siding without buckling it. If I drive screws through this, it's going to pull the siding into the sheathing and it's going to buckle. So let me show you a simple workaround. But not before adding silicone to the back side and also siliconing the area around the cut. This way I know not even so much as a tiny little ant is going to get in here. Vinyl siding must be able to expand and contract with the changing temperatures, so if you screw this copper plate to the structure, the siding will eventually buckle, and guess whose fault that will be? So to attach this metal, you're going to need to choose a different way of doing it, and I'm going to use a 1 8 inch drill bit, and I'm going to drill through the copper sheet and the thin layer of siding, but I am not drilling into the sheathing. My fastener of choice is a top rivet which will securely hold the metal to the siding while still permitting the siding to expand and contract as needed. Pop rivet tool is pretty cheap. You can pick them up at your local box stores, Ace Hardware, any mom and pop hardware store. Just make sure your drill bit is the exact size as your pop rivet. You drill the hole through, you push the pop rivet through, and then you squeeze it. It'll squeeze from the back and the front squeezing the two uh, pieces together and then it'll conveniently cut off the nail that it uses to do that. And what you're left with is a nice, flat, and solid connection. 